Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and perhaps you've heard of a little game called Minecraft. Well, today it was partially, partially, notice the asterisk at the end, partially open sourced. So I don't want to mislead anybody, it is not fully open sourced yet, but they're moving towards that. Now you may be wondering, well hasn't Minecraft source code sort of been available for a long time now? Well that's a different thing, There's, that's a reverse compilation. Basically you can decompile Java code, fairly simple, um, and get it back from bytecode to somewhat human readable code. But this is different. This is actually the developers behind Minecraft slowly releasing libraries used to create the game. Now, I am one of maybe nine people on Earth that never got into Minecraft. So I'm talking about this mostly as a developer of interest to other developers on the channel. So if you're a big time Minecraft fan, first off, I apologize if I screw up terminology or pronunciation or anything else. Minecraft just isn't my jam, but this is obviously huge news. So I figured I would share it here on the channel. So. If you head on over to Minecraft.net, you will notice this news story in the middle. It says, programmers, play with Minecraft's inner working. We're opening up some of the game's code. Once again, some of. Once again, that is why there is an asterisk right here. So I am not misleading you, but let's move on to the story. So we go over here. Here is the news post that is linked off of the main page. And you will see, making games isn't easy. Sure, it's not rocket science or brain surgery, uh, but it's still incredibly difficult to learn to code, program, and sheer blind luck your way into making a video game. If you only had access to more resources, well, the lovely folks at, Mineho at Stockholm's Minecraft Java team are giving you just that by opening up some of Minecraft's code as libraries so they can be used however you'd like. Want to use them to improve your Minecraft mods? Great idea. Want to use them for your own project? Go for it. Just don't forget to credit us. Want to use them to help improve pieces of the Minecraft Java engine? Thanks. We really appreciate it. So I, I am assuming everybody that's on this channel knows what a library is. So we don't really need to go into that uh, much of a detail here. But basically, it is a chunk of reusable code that Minecraft itself depends on. It's a way of making your code modular and reusable. And what they're doing is giving you pieces of the Minecraft game engine that you can now modify and slot back in. So again, I don't mod Minecraft, so I don't know how much this improves the modding scene. But generally, anytime you've got a game engine that's being modded, the more access to source code, the more you can do in the mod space. Also, you can, from what they're showing here, adapt their code into your own project. Now, not many game developers are using Java, um, so it's gonna be more of a look and learn thing, but let's get back to exactly what they've released here. So at this point in time, they have released one library, uh, and there's more coming later. So actually, did I gloss over that? Okay, yeah, this part is important. The plan is to open up different libraries gradually. These libraries are open source and MIT licensed, which means that basically anyone can go in there and they can contribute and can help improve our game engine. So basically they are piecemeal going to be releasing parts of their game engine under the MIT license on GitHub. So you can use that however you want. Now, if you're unfamiliar with open source licenses, MIT license is very, very liberal. Basically you can't sue them. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. So please don't sue them. If they make your computer explode, you can't do that under MIT. There's a couple of other quibbles about there, but you can do just about whatever you want with MIT source code. You can uh, create your own commercial project from it, no problem at all. And you do not, unlike, say, the GPL, you don't have to make your own derived source code available to the public. So it's a very liberal license, which is quite cool. Or if they're making their own game, they don't have to rewrite these little parts. They can just use ours, which have been tried and tested because we're a very popular game, apparently. So basically, you can slot in these libraries into your own Java-powered game engine. Now, I'm interested to see what this does for projects like um, JMonkey Engine or Joggle or LibGDX, the Java-based the Java game engines out there, that if you're going to get these battle-tested Minecraft libraries released, that are slot in and usable in those kind of uh, languages and environments, will we see a bit of an uptick in Java development because of this? It'll be interesting to find that out. So they've released one library on GitHub called Brigadier. And let's head on over. Okay, so I'm so proud of that name, blah, 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 blah. Brigadier is the name of the command engine that Minecraft uses. Brigadier is also the first library we've opened up. So in the game, you can type something like forward slash give dinner bone sticks. And that goes into Brigadier, breaks it down into pieces, figures out what you're going to do with those pieces of text. So in many ways, I guess it's a, a text parser and command parser. Um, yeah, I haven't jumped into it in any kind of depth so far. Uh, but that appears to be the piece that they have released so far. Now, again, they are talking about getting more and more pieces out there later on. Um, they also have Data Fixer Upper, which is, yeah, it's, it's an interesting name. It's the kind of name that internal tools get called. Um, 
it's one of the most important parts of the Minecraft game engine. It's also the second library we're opening up. Problem is we have Minecraft pretty much sure every game has in that data changes over time. We add a thing into Minecraft that we kind of have to change how we store levels. We store all the save files and stuff to accommodate it. Once we load up any world in Minecraft right now, you can have some data that has not been touched for six years because that chunk was last played six years ago. So we need to know, okay, this level actually looks really old. Now we've got to turn that old data into what it should look like now in a way that the game engine can currently read. So that's basically what data fixer or upper is. It's a the game level data parser program, apparently. Um, and yeah, that's it. Those are the pieces that have been released today. Now, of course, there are more pieces coming out today. You can reach out to Nathan on Twitter to basically say, hey, give me more. Uh, but if you head on over to GitHub, you can find uh, the Mo Mojang, Mojang. I should actually know how to pronounce that one. But again, I am not a Minecraft person. I'll go with Mojang. I've read it a thousand times. I've never actually said it out loud. Mojang, Mojang. Whichever. Here's the Brigadier page. As you can see, the source code is available here. It is quite predictably enough in Java. Um, but you can jump in, just take a look at the source code if that's all you need to do, even if you're not going to use it. But it is this is the command parser in Dispatcher for Minecraft Java Edition. And as I mentioned earlier, it is available under the MIT license. Now, if you head back to the... Oh, it's Mohong, isn't it? I don't know. If you head back to the root page right here, you'll also find that data fixer upper is also available. It's also Java. The code is there and you got a bit of a description on how to use it and how to use Gradle with it. Now, Gradle and Maven are two build systems for Java. <laughs> They're lots of fun. Uh, so anyways, that is the, the news of the day. So it's not quite a full open sourcing going on here, but two key components of the Minecraft game engine were just released to the public. So if you are a Minecraft modder, you now have a lot more flexibility than you previously did. I'm not sure the data fixer upper tool is gonna be that big to people, uh, but the event broadcaster definitely is a core part of a game engine and also it's just some more commercial code that we can jump in and learn from so you can never say no to, to big games opening up their source code like what we just saw here so not the full game engine more coming in time stay tuned i don't know what the release schedule on this or to what extent they're going to release uh, but it's cool to see both of them out here and both of them in a good open source friendly library and once again i apologize for my lack of knowledge on minecraft probably mangled a whole bunch of things this video Eh, what can you do? Hopefully some of you guys found that useful useful or informative. Hopefully if I did something wrong or said something wrong, let me know comments down below. Again, not a Minecrafter. So if you are, let me know if this is useful to you, if you're excited by this or meh. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.